What if I told you that to avoid billions in fines, some of Europe's biggest car makers might be about to sell thousands of brand new electric cars to themselves? Now, it sounds strange, but it's a tactic born out of desperation. A strict CO2 emissions deadline is looming for the European auto industry, and if they miss their targets, it's not just a slap on the wrist. It's a financial penalty so large it could seriously damage their profits, it could actually drive them out of business. So some companies have a controversial trick up their sleeve that lives in a legal grey area. It's pre-registering thousands of new electric vehicles to make their sales numbers look better. I'm Dave, and I'm going to break down how this all works, who actually ends up paying the price, and what it all means for the future of the car buyers. So what's really going on with European car makers right now? Well, to get the trick, you first have to understand the massive threat they're facing. The European Union has some of the strictest CO2 emission regulations on the planet. For the 2025 to 2027 period, there's a daunting fleet-wide target automakers must hit. It's set around 93.6 grams of CO2 per kilometre. OK, now to be clear, we in the UK also have our own strict targets, uh, but for both the UK and the EU recently, they became somewhat less strict. Now, it's not a free-for-all, it's not a cancellation, just got less strict. It, both the UK and the UK Commission realised a few companies were actually trying and would fall short, while a group of others hardly bothered even trying and were going to fail dismally. So they decided to effectively waive the very strict targets for 2025 and 2026 years. And instead, well, they could take up to two years longer to hit the 2025 sales using average sales. And they could include future production coming online and other measures to ease up the pressure. It's a breathing space, a helping hand for those actually trying but they stress that the 2025-2026 mandates are still there, and from 2027 onwards, the mandates will be rigidly enforced. In plain English, it means that those actually trying and making progress probably have little to fear for the next year or so. Those that made no effort at all, just using the relaxation as an excuse to go back to making petrol cars once again, they're likely to get hammered. Maybe not this year, possibly this year, certainly by the end of next year. Now, that target might just sound like a number, but for every single gram they're judged to have gone over the target, the car maker is fined €95. Euros. That €95 Euro fine is multiplied by every single car they register in the EU that year. Doing some quick maths, if an automaker sells 2 million cars in Europe and their entire fleet average is just over 1 gram over the target, €190 million Euro fine. 3 grams half a billion. You can see now how quickly this could spiral into billions for the industry. So this is no longer a single hard deadline at the end of this year, but it doesn't eliminate the pressures either. It does mean that the fourth quarter of this year is the final, in effect, frantic sprint to get the best possible start for that three-year average. With battery electric car sales making up about 17% of the EU market so far this year, it's actually increasing, but that's averaged out over the year. The pace is still slower than needed to meet these goals comfortably. And this was the fear of Ursula von der Leyen. Any easing off could be grabbed on by those reluctant manufacturers to just slow down EVs, speed up ice. Quite the opposite to what the mandate was intended to do. When you're facing a financial cliff like that, you can bet car makers are searching for every loophole they can find. And that brings us to the most controversial tactic in the playbook, and that's pre-registration. So what exactly is pre-registration? Well, in simple terms, it's when a car manufacturer or its dealership registers a brand new car in its own name. In effect, it sells it to itself. The car gets a license plate and the official registration number, and it's counted in the sales stats for that month. But here's the catch. There's often no actual customer. The car often hasn't been sold to a real person. Sometimes it might be sold as a demonstrator, genuinely, or a service courtesy car, genuinely, to itself. But it might actually just be sitting in the showroom, technically owned by the dealership or the car company. 
These are essentially ghost cars. On paper, they look like a sold vehicle, but in reality, they're just stock waiting for a home. Well, why on earth would they want to do this? It's all about playing the averages. The EU CO2 target is a fleet-wide average. A zero-emission electric vehicle brings that average down a lot. By pre-registering thousands of EVs in the final months of the year, Carmaker can artificially boost the number of zero-emission vehicles in its fleet. And at a certain level, the so-called sales make the manufacturer compliant and no longer have to pay any fines for missing targets. That's one saving. But there's another more shady. Instead of working hard to reach targets and falling slightly short and pre-registering a small number of EVs, um, in order to avoid fines, they could just pre-register simply loads of them. That way, each ghost EV they register would help to cancel out the emissions from the more profitable but higher emitting gasoline, petrol and diesel cars they've sold all year. That's a clear incentive to make far more petrol and diesel cars than would normally be possible. It's a powerful, if questionable, tool for compliance, short-term fix when real-world production or demand isn't quite keeping up. Well, the whole thing sounds a bit shady, so you're probably wondering, is it legal? Is it new? And the short answer is, yeah, it's technically not illegal. There's no specific EU rule that stops a company from registering its own cars. The practice operates in a regulatory grey area. It is a loophole that takes advantage of a system that tracks registrations, not actual sales to paying customers. And in effect, that penalises people like Tesla, who actually only ever sell directly to customers, not themselves. But just because it's legal doesn't mean it isn't controversial. Critics argue that pre-registration is simply gaming the system. The spirit of the law is to get more zero-emission cars into the hands of real drivers. Pre-registering a small number of EVs might be seen as just avoiding fines, but pre-registering masses of them to blatantly bypass the rules, make massive numbers of ICE cars, that's something totally different. And this isn't some wild theory. We've seen this before. At the end of previous compliance periods, there have been increased spikes in EV registrations that many attribute to this exact practice. It's a known industry tactic, but it's always been there. Back in the 70s, I was a sales manager at a Citroen dealership down in Cornwall, and I was often put under pressure by the manufacturer to hit certain targets by registering demonstrator or courtesy cars for a nice bit of discount, of course. It's always been there, and it's always likely to be there. Now, analysts are predicting we'll see it happen again as we near the end of 2025. It's a sort of predictable move when the financial pressure is so high. By the way, if you're finding this look behind the car industry's curtain valuable, take a second to please hit the subscribe button. We go deep on topics like this every week. Your support helps us. OK, so what this means for you? Well, many are going to say, so what? Car makers might save themselves from gigantic fines by creating an army of ghost cars. Why should you care? Well, there is a fear that this strategy might have some major knock-on effects that can directly affect you as a car buyer. You might be swayed by the figures to convince you that oh, EVs are doing really rather well and you want to join them by buying one. In my humble opinion, it's a desperate myth generated by the EV critics. I can never believe that anyone would look at those sales figures and use them as the sole reason why they chose to buy an EV at this time. Surely we must be credited with more common sense than that. But worry not, because first of all, that's exactly why the UK government and the SMMT, Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, both monitor fig these figures very, very closely. They don't want any mar market manipulation, market distortion, nor any manufacturers deliberately, go deliberately going against government policy. The registration numbers require manufacturers and dealers to declare any such pre-registrations, making the sales and registration figures we see published every month pretty close to what people or companies are actually buying. The other really, 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 really big reason people cite as a fear pre-registered cars, they can't be sold new anymore. 
So after a few months, they hit the market as nearly new ex-demonstrators or openly advertised as pre-registered cars. To sell them fast, dealers will often have to offer them at a pretty big discount. This means that in the first few months of next year, you could see suddenly a flood of very low mileage EVs for sale at surprisingly affordable prices. I, I don't know where I'm going wrong here. I cannot understand, never have understood, how this is ever going to be bad for buyers. Critics say that thousands are really cheap, good as new EVs might sound great, but this flood can instantly devalue other e electric EVs. Oh, to tosh! The reason it hasn't destroyed the new car industry, va uh, new car values over the last 50 years, is that no manufacturer can possibly afford to do that. Certainly they can do a few cars, maybe quite a few more. Certainly, it could be considered good business practice, but thousands of cars, enough to dramatically affect the price of new cars, don't think so. If that many were made available all at once, the prices would definitely crash, and some bright souls out there would grab the bargains of the century. We all do it already. How many people wait until there are just a few holidays left unsold, unsold and wait for prices to crash? We do it. Lastminute.com built an entire business on that principle. Cheap holidays last minute. Has it destroyed the entire holiday industry? No, it hasn't. We all search for the bargains, always have, always will. It might just change our buying habits from getting at the end of the year to waiting to sometime in the new year. While pre-registration is one of the most dramatic moves, it's just one piece of a much larger strategy. Car makers are pulling every lever they possibly can. Another key strategy is this push for plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, PHEVs. Registration for PHEVs have seen a huge jump recently because on paper they have very low CO2 numbers that help the fleet average. The catch is that their real-world emissions are often four, five, six times higher than lab tests, tests would suggest, especially if the owners don't ever charge them. So, those are trying to fiddle, fiddle the figures. Car makers lobby really, really hard knowing that they're based on lies. No PHEV can ever get 500 mile per gallon, but they can legally claim they can. You need to watch out because the extent they go to will to con you is something they want to sell you. Sometimes ventures into the fully illegal. Yeah, remember Dieselgate. So luckily the UK government's just confirmed it will not be conned anymore and in the UK PHEVs are now going to be classed as no better than petrol cars, sometimes far worse because they now have to lug around a, around a huge heavy battery that rarely if ever gets charged. Over a short uh, transition period, PHEVs will lose all of their BIK benefiting kind environmental status. Loopholes do get corrected. Well, this is a battle being fought on multiple fronts as engineering, aggressive sales, creative accounting, political lobbying, pre-registration. Pre it's just the most visible sign of a system under enormous strain. So we're watching a high stakes game of cat and mouse between automated makers and regulators. The car companies are trying to dodge a multi-million euro bullet and the evidence suggests they might turn to some controversial tactics like pre-registering thousands of ghost electric cars to do it. While this might shield them from fines, it does absolutely nothing good for their profit margins. It's a short-term solution that might avoid the penalty, but sidesteps the spirit of the law and heads them directly into much further trouble in future years when they have to account for those cars and sell them off cheap. The big question as we head past the new year is, will we see a flood of discounted pre-registered EVs hitting the showrooms? And does this tactic ultimately help or hinder the real transi transition to an all-electric future? I'm going to pass it back to you. What do you think? Is this just a smart business strategy to survive tough rules, or is it a cynical way to cheat the system? Let me know in your thoughts and comments down below. Now, we are going to be able to monitor this because we do get the, the pre-registration figures from the SMMT. They do lag quite a bit behind. Anyway, if you want to dive deeper into this or want to find out the results of it, please check out our other video on why EV prices seem so disconnected from reality. And as always, thanks very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. I'm Dave. <laughs>